Reliability Solutions delivers hands-on, hard skills reliability training for global industry. Our unique roadmap structured curriculum, along with our strategic and application implementation work, keeps your entire operation moving forward to achieve a precise state. Visit our website, follow us on LinkedIn, or download a brochure and enjoy our on-site written and video content. All we have to do is go and turn the shaft so that the oil and the grease is picked back up and it's put all the way around, we'll use as the example, a bearing. The question though is, how many turns? You know what we hear all the time. Oh, a quarter turn. Well, look, the quarter turn is better than no turn. But in one full turn of that inner shaft, understand something. The cage of that bearing only turns approximately 38%, maybe 31%. And because the shaft is not loaded, there's also a little slip on the cage. So you can see right now that it's going to take you at least four revolutions. Well, let's put five in the bank. Now, here's what I want you to write down. You see, this is all about observation. This is all about ensuring that we begin to understand and know what we have today. And so, what I want you to write down is go down into your warehousing area. Sit down with them. Ask them if anyone is doing it. There's no rocket science here, folks. If you want your money back and you want to start to be reliable, start where? Start with your warehousing, how you store parts. Now, I'm being quite conservative when I talk about 10%. We've actually been in facilities that have over 30% of their equipment in a failed state. That's their stored equipment. And by the way, you understand that all warranties are void upon payment of the invoice. You paid it, you stored it, five years later you go to use it, and it's already a failed state. And the list goes on. We can talk about that. Now, you can see, therefore, that how important is accounting, buying the right parts, and how important is storing or warehousing as to reliability and ensuring that our manufactured product is correct. Gosh, we haven't even started anything. We also have another problem we've got to talk about today, right now. Do you understand that better than 50% of the craft, trades, technicians, the skilled workforce, the operating ranks that we have in America today, and I include Canada when I talk about that, is over 55 years old. Do you know what's going to happen, folks, in five years? In five years, better than 50% of our skilled workforce has the opportunity, I didn't say that they're going to be able to do it, but they have the opportunity to retire. Where are our apprentices? Where are the transfer of skills that are happening in any manufacturing plant to take up for this slack? Let me go one step deeper. Where are we in our secondary education to ensure that those kids who are in high school can understand they're going to make a wonderful living with their hands. And by the way, not everybody can be a lawyer or an engineer or a philosopher. 80% of the workforce in those countries, in those economies that are expanding, work with their hands on the floor. Why is it that we can't get kids up there today? You know why? Go to a trace fair and go see what's at that trace fair. And I want you to see what is going on and what is not going on. See how many booths are talking about machinists. See how many booths are talking about mill rods. See how many booths are talking about mechanics or diesel mechanics. See where it is about the pipe fitters and or the welders. And you know what? You won't see them. That's because we have told this upcoming generation that if you don't go to university, you're a dummy. Well, I beg to differ. Because we're losing some of the most brilliant talent that we could have on the operating, on the manufacturing workforce today, simply because we've told them, you've got to get an MBA. Stop the crap. If we want to become the manufacturing giant, if we want to become the leader of the world's workforce, then let's get back to where we've got to get back to, and let's start manufacturing and using our hands again. 
We have the knowledge, we have the skills, but we're not utilizing them. Now let me go by, by the way, why this is so important for you. Where can we learn our lessons? I'll tell you where we learn our lessons. Part of the arenas that we learn our lessons in is we learn from our military. The United States Navy has the world's largest fleet of nuclear vessels. And we don't have nuclear accidents. We don't have vessels exploding or falling up or falling down into the sea. They're not blowing up, and I'll tell you why. Because they understand that once you've got sustainability, you have to move beyond that into institutionalization. And if you don't believe me, understand this. That 100% of all the people on board that ship are transferred out, they leave and move over to other vessels every three to five years. What would happen to your manufacturing workforce place if I took 50% of all the people out who've had the best experience? What would happen if I took 100% of those people out every three to five years? Are you institutionalized enough today to ensure that that process that you use would be not only sustainable, but institutionalized in such a way that you would still be the leading manufacturer? Because if you're not, you're in for a world of hurt. Visit our website, follow us on LinkedIn, or download a brochure and enjoy our on-site written and video content.